Hello. My plan for the day is no longer an is, but a was. Don't be confused, I'll explain. I had a plan. I have two people popping down today, but as usual, something pops up to make my life just a little bit more complicated. So the was has become an is, because now the new is didn't exist before, and that is my MGF boot. Can't get it open. That's the key there, as you can see. Now what you do is you stick this into the lock and turn it clockwise and it should open or anti-clockwise, can't even remember. And this is what happens. Nothing. It won't turn. You wriggle it, nothing. It stopped working. It has given up on being a lock. That is bad news, or at least inconvenient. Did a search, of course, because one thing that many people have done with these is kind of leave the keys in the boot and then close the boot and then you can't get it open because there's, there's no boot release anywhere. And the other thing, of course, is without being able to get the boot open, you can't get the bonnet open. So, should the car suffer with a flat battery, or anything like that, I need to find out what to do. Well, as it doesn't move at all, nothing. Inconvenient. It looks like the inside of the barrel has given up. It's broken, so it doesn't matter how much jiggling you do, there's no way of getting it to release itself. Unless I had a set of something else. A locksmith could probably get into it, but the locksmith I know is a very long way off. Well, I've looked into this and uh, apparently there's almost no way in, unless you're quite happy to smash something. You could smash the lock, that would be uh, rather time consuming and damaging. I mean, the lock's buggered anyway, so what difference does it make? No. Or the other way is to break one of the rear light clusters and get your hand in and do the, the thing there. There is another way as well, apparently, of, of getting into it, which is very, very time consuming and involves taking the engine bay cover off and having bits of, uh, oh yeah, undoing the boot lid from the back. I don't think that's going to work. No. Although I may have a spare light cluster I can bung on, it's going to need a new barrel as well and key. Otherwise, you close it, you're back with the same problem again. And unless the solution is to smash a light cluster every time I want to get into the boot, then I don't think that's acceptable. Now, I like the old lever that you have for the boot on the 600 and the 200 and the 400 and the 45. I think that's good. Oh, and the Honda Civic. I think that's a good idea. Oh, and uh, many of the other Japanese cars where they thought of that idea, because it's a good idea. But, uh, well, could I make something like that work for it? Could I? Like that, that'd be good. It's more convenient than having to use a key. Plus it also means that if I do one day accidentally drop the key in the boot, I won't have to use my spare to get it back out. Previous attempts to get into Alison's boot have failed. So now I'm going to have to do something a bit more drastic. Not that I want to, but into the lockup of Final Destination. Somewhere in this dark and dingy madness, 
not madness, just sadness, will be a replacement boot, switch, um, lock, key, possibly. But I don't know if definite. I may be able to find something just over there in the darkness somewhere, or just over there in the darkness and the trappedness. It's not that convenient having all this stuff here, you know. Right, so I've explored this corner, and what I'm looking for is definitely not there. So that means that I've now got to go over to the other corner where the car is in the way and explore there. Right, here I am on the other side of the car, right in the corner where there are more boxes. More boxes stuffed into the corner to try and save space. And as you can see, it is a bit on the tight side down here. Just here is a box full of R8 bits. And I think what I'm looking for might well be in there. Well, I didn't particularly enjoy that, but I've got what I think I need. I have an idea. I do, you know. On the floor here, we have two cables for an R8. That's a Rover R8. These two cables operate the opening of the fuel filler flap and the boot. So I'm going to see if I can make the shorter of these two cables into something useful for my MG. One last check before I start committing myself to vandalism. No, you might want to look away now. Well, that was a lot tougher than it looks. I've had to use the wrong end of the cable to make this work, but now I think it does. So let's try it. So, I'm going to tape it round and pull it through, and then I'll find some way of attaching it so it doesn't all fall apart. Oh, it works. How reliably? I don't really know just yet, but I need to do something to tidy this up a bit as well, because that's not designed to do that at all is it some inspiration in the box of clips mm. ah ah yes oh well we're rapidly approaching the end of the day here at PNHQ and is the car finished that's the question no it's not but it soon will be because, well, there's been a slight problem. I mean, for the past three hours, I haven't done any filming because it's not gone quite as well as I was actually hoping. The cable that I've used to replace the original one with just isn't quite right. It needs a bit that extends about that far 
rather than that far. The difference of being able to close or not close. So it was inconsistent. Sometimes it would close, but most of the time it wouldn't. So I've had to take a different measure altogether. No, not altogether. But I've had to do more of what you might call a budge job. But it, it works perfectly well, that's the thing. <laughs> Bodgery, bodgery, bodgery. And the point is, if it works, it works. It's bodgery, but it works. Sometimes, and I've mentioned this before, haven't I, about bodgery. Unless you can do bodgery, you can't really fix things, can you? You've got to learn how to find a solution to something without having the correct part. And that's what I've done today. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm happy that the car's now a bit more budged than it was before, but at least it does the job it's supposed to do. And I am happy with that part. So yeah, I am happy about it. Okay, that's gone full circle, hasn't it? It would have been really nice if the cable from the R8, the boot cable, oh, I didn't, uh, do you know what? I didn't even think about that other cable that was obviously far too long to see what the end of that was like. That might have been a perfect fit. Why didn't I think of that before? It isn't. So, you have the cable. You have like a nipple thing on the end. You have a bit that comes out, an exposed part, and then some nylon groovy bits to fit in the groove that are secure enough not to pop out. And it's they've got to be the right length. If they're not the right length, then it's just not going to work, which is why I've had to knock something up which I might as well explain as some cable, two pieces of wire uh, securely tied around the end of this thing. And then I've made a sleeve, a, a sleeve out of tape. So the sleeve goes around the cable and then the cable is then stuck to the inside of the car, which obviously isn't a perfect job. But again, it's an exercise in figuring things out. So I'm actually quite happy with that. I do believe that's the end of this episode. Although, after me saying thank you to everyone, there may well be just another bit of something to watch. But I haven't decided just yet. You'll be able to figure it out by just how much more there is left on the video. You know, there's another 15 seconds, then there probably isn't. But if there's a minute, then there definitely is. If there's two minutes, then yeah, there's definitely a bit more on the end of the video for you to watch if you want to do. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being a subscriber. Thank you very much for liking the video. Thank you very much for commenting, if it's a nice comment. And thank you very much for being a channel member. Only 99 pence. <laughs> okay.